Every good movement needs a face, and the face of childhood indoctrination has one. Yes, this right here is the face of the infamous Kid Preacher from the Oprah Winfrey Show. No doubt many of you have actually seen this uh, clip before, but I just thought I wanted to talk about childhood indoctrination, and this would be a great way to start. So just to give you a little bit of a background here, just so you get a little context, uh, these uh, parents were having their kids preach uh, outside of an elementary school. And uh, eventually the news caught wind of this and then eventually uh, Oprah heard about it and thought it would make for an interesting story and asked them if they wanted to come on. And God bless you, Oprah, because we wouldn't have the face of our, our movement without you. So thank you for bringing them on and immortalizing, giving us a face that is going to be more recognizable than the Mona Lisa by the time we're done. Anyway, let's uh, run it and uh, we'll talk about it. these kids are just regurgitating Bible verses. I want to know if you really understand what it is that you are yeah, preaching. Like to make up a reading comprehension test for these kids to see if they really... You're not on mic, so... This, this student's an A know, student in the school. Could you maybe give me a Bible verse? Oh, that doesn't mean Interpret anything. it or something? Yeah, yeah could you, yeah. Could you could preach for us and let us... and then tell us what it is you mean? So they have their panel of hyper-turbo religious folks here, and uh, they're asking them a pretty simple question. Do your children even understand the words that they're shouting in front of the uh, elementary school? Do they, do they, can they even comprehend what's going on? Or as they said, are they just regurgitating? Which is a fantastic question to ask because what would, what would childhood indoctrination be without cramming ideas and scriptures and verses into a child's brain without ever giving them the tools to think and reason on things uh, and establish foundations, use logic. No, just say these words. And as we get into it farther, we'll see the real raid boss in this whole situation. Mm -hmm. Could you, Duffy, could you? In your own word. But you want me yeah. preaching it? Yeah, whatever you want to do. Okay. Well, there's a verse. There's a verse. You want him to preach? Yeah, yeah. Get up and preach. So you see here a clear indication of how this thing works. They're asking him to preach, and he's like, you want me to preach? And then the, the dad comes in with a, well, there's a scripture. <laughs> you can see how these things go. It's always, well, you gotta, what you got to realize, or, well... And then they start quoting a, a verse. But as he gets completely flamed out by the crowd, uh, he, in his arrogance, says, you know what? This seems like a good idea. I'm going to let my son preach to this crowd on national television. So let's see how it goes. Yeah, go ahead. Stand up right where you are if you want to. Go ahead. Want, Jeffy, do you want to preach? If you want to. If you don't want to, The audience to, don't... shouldn't be able to intimidate you into this. If you want to do it, it's up to you. The first time I ever saw this, I actually got a jump scare. I thought I was watching a suspense movie and the boogeyman comes out of the closet. When he starts yelling and the look on his face, you, the, you could hear a pin drop uh, in, in that audience before there was chatter and it went silent. Everyone was completely shocked. And for good reason. This is not okay this this situation that they've concocted by raising this this kid with only using the bible and just cramming it down his his throat and making sure that he every single step of his life is basically to become one of these radical preachers they're just they're molding him to do that and we can see the clear results it's not okay i don't think anyone in the audience was thinking like Oh yeah, you tell them there, Duffy. I mean, maybe there was a few people, but my God, was that wild. Anyway, let's see what proceeds. Okay, okay. 
Now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute, please. People want to know what that means that you just said. In your own word, tell us what does that mean. It means just what it says. No. Oh, that's right. So Duffy wasn't quite ready when he stepped up to the plate for that curveball to be thrown his way because he can't answer the question they're asking. Well, what does it mean? It, it means exactly what it says, and it says what it means, so yeah. And the, and the Bible says to mean what you say and say what you mean, let your yes mean yes, so I'm just doing what the Bible's telling me. You can see none of the people in the audience are buying buying this act, but let's, uh, let's see uh, a little farther. Don't yell it. Don't yell it to us. Tell us what what that means. Well, I've never read the Bible. Let's pretend, and I don't understand that type of um, language. Tell me how, it, how that applies in my own life. Well, um, why I'm screaming is um, the Bible definition of preaching is Isaiah 58:1. It says, "Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet." Stay away from the Bible, Duffy. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> This kid is like a goddamn gumball machine. You put a quarter in him and you will get a Bible verse. No questions asked. I'm sure every single thing this kid says when he's giving an answer is, well, the Bible says that Isaiah and the Bible says that Matthew and oh gosh darn it, the Bible says there in Revelation. And they're, they're just wanting him to explain something in his own words, just naturally as a regular human being. But no, this kid is an absolute robot, and we're about to see why. How do you stay away from the Bible if you're going to preach, though? The Bible says you're to speak as the oracles of God. Uh -huh. If you don't want to talk the way this Bible talks, you should keep your mouth shut. So we just saw the stormtroopers before, but now we get to peer behind the curtain and really see who's controlling the whole situation. So the emperor over here in his infinite wisdom is going to tell everyone that if you don't want to talk how this book talks, then you should shut up. Shut your mouth if you can't talk as the Bible talks and slaps that Bible down on his lap and gives a proud nod because this has this man has ascended from heaven with the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior and his his whole role on this planet is to impart it to us via raising his son to be a radical preacher. Okay, yes ma'am. Oh, we still look, you, but you understand what people are saying. They want you to interpret what you just said, Duffy. The Bible says does not interpretation belong to God. Genesis chapter 40, read it. Unlike watching the Game of Thrones, we have a satisfying ending. We have a complete picture. Everything makes perfect sense. His dad is exactly the same. You ask him a question and he gives you a, a, a Bible verse. And by golly, what the Bible says is what I'm going to do. I find it a, a, astounding that the level of indoctrination can get to such a degree where you have this clone of, of this little clown ball over here. And of all the people to clone, of all the people to make in your image, we've chosen this guy. It's really unbelievable, but he does like that Bible and slapping it down. Now, I want to show you guys another video, and that comes from the Jehovah's Witnesses. This one isn't going to be as extreme, but it will show and demonstrate the type of thinking that goes on behind closed doors. And I like this video because it really highlights exactly how organizations can teach their members to be parents that instill in their kids these practices that make these weirdos to be quite honest anyway uh let's run it so we'll listen together to our first subheading spiritual restoration why it matters let's have the reading of paragraph nine consider the historical perspective christians back in the first century enjoyed many spiritual blessings Jesus and the apostles foretold that true worship would be corrupted and lost. So a classic, you know, you bring your kids to church and they're not going to pay attention. A lot of the material information that's being discussed is directed towards adults. So the kid really isn't going to be able to pay that much attention. And it's really interesting how the kid, you know, is just like, I'm going to play with my car because he's what, like five, six years old. And his dad just snatches it away and looks at him with this disapproving look. And it really is going to highlight just how serious 
uh, some of these organizations can be, and you can no doubt predict the results that they will have. So kids. It is good to see they have the exact same design team as uh, The Incredibles. <laughs> Just when I saw that car going in there, I couldn't help. Like, that looks exactly like the one in uh, Mr. Incredible uh, drove. Anyway, let's keep going. What did you learn at meeting tonight? No sleeping at the meeting. And no playing at the meeting. Good. Why should we pay attention at the meetings? What happened, Dad? So when she asked the question, what did we learn? It couldn't be, well, what did we learn by actually being there, of taking in this spiritual food? They didn't come away with any nuggets of information. The real lesson was to pay attention and not fall asleep and no playing. No fun, no games, just be boring, and that's, that's good enough. <laughs> it's really unbelievable. You are right. He paid attention and it saved his life. Paying attention at the meetings can help save your life. At Genesis 6.22, we read. So now we go from goofy to downright terrifying. If you do what you did tonight, God is going to kill you. Imagine it would just be like if Noah didn't pay attention. He would have been completely blasted with the rest of the world. Remember that Bible story where it said that every single person but eight people was uh, drowned, and all the animals as well. Yeah, that story, well, that could happen to you. You could be one of the people, you know, gasping for your last breath as there's rains for 40 days and 40 nights. So I just found this completely unbelievable when it goes to, like, this really dark, dark place. Do this or you're going to die. Pay attention or you will be dead. And Noah did according to all that God had commanded him. He did just so. So now that they have paid attention at the meeting, now their life will be saved. So I just liked uh, putting both of these videos together because it kind of shows you what happens behind closed doors. Like what, what's going on behind the curtains and it's these lessons of do this or you're going to die. It means your life, which is re really aggressive for like a, a five-year-old. And it starts with the, those little things at home and then it eventually progresses to the point where you know, you're on the Oprah Winfrey show, just yelling. You're just full elemental man. Just, just looked a crazed, glazed look in his eyes. So anyway, I thought you guys might enjoy those. And uh, childhood indoctrination, it's pretty messed up. Don't do it. And uh, that's about it. Thanks. Bye.